Hey everybody, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Down to Earth. It's Monday, May 4th, 2020. And what a time we're going to have this morning. We have quite a bit to cover. It's been an interesting overnight. I must say that pop culture kind of took over. So we saw where a Detroit rapper kind of uh, made a song about the governor of Michigan and her response in the wake of the coronavirus to Michiganders. And I must say, I spent most of last night <laughs> listening to the song because I found it so interesting that pop culture uh, interlaced and intersected with politics of the day. And I guess we can't help it because it was just last week right here in the state of Michigan that we saw where armed protesters, uh, white men with their guns, militia, stormed the Capitol building in which there were elected representatives of the people who are black and everybody else, but they still stormed the Capitol, insisting that they had a right to protest the governor's emergency orders. I must tell you, I was curious about that. So I went to look it up and under the constitution, governors do have the right to call for an emergency, a state of emergency, and they do have the right to enforce under that emergency, anyone who does not observe. So the governor of Michigan is not paying anybody any attention. She's just doing her job because it's kind of like, I told you all not to come out and associate. And if you choose to do so, then obviously you're placing your own lives at risk. But I must say though, it just, just makes me question because if black and brown people had picked up guns and gone downtown Detroit to storm the, the city, the city, the city building, the city tower downtown on Woodward, or if black people in, in Lansing had taken their guns and gone to the Capitol to storm the Capitol, I dare say, I don't think they would be alive today. And guess what? They would say it's justified because they're breaking the peace. So it's still amazing to me that they didn't charge those people with a risk who posed a risk to public safety. I'm still waiting for that to eschew from there. I think they should use facial recognition technology and go after them in the same manner that they would have gone after anybody else who is non-white. I'm just saying, you know, we got to call it what it is. This is 2020, y'all. This is not 1956 or 1965. This is 2020. And we've got to start leveling the playing field and start calling justice is justice. If it is going to be justice, then it has to be just, not just for some, but for all of us. And so this morning I wanted to, a story came up that I wanted to talk about, and it surrounds the case of a man in Detroit who is a black man who spent 46 years in jail for a crime that he did not commit. This crime took place in 1972. And it's interesting to me because 1972 was 46 years ago. And of course, America was a very different place. There were very few black people in positions of power or in positions of, shall I say, legal power. So in 1972, a black man who already had a questionable past, and even those who did not have a background in criminality or who had never had any intersection or any encounters with, with, the, with, with the prison system, they're just as likely to be beaten and to be, uh, to be locked up innocently for no other reason than the color of their skin. And this, when you think that we had gone past this, here we are in 2020 with white men showing up at the Capitol with militias, with guns and swastikas and nooses right? Is that fair? Do you, does anyone think that's fair? I mean, if we're going to level the playing field, we should level it for anybody. I'm pretty sure the organizers of this event that took place at the Capitol, I am pretty sure they did not anticipate that the people whom they paid to show up were going to show up with swastikas and Confederate flags and nooses. I think they're appalled. But I am saying to you, those are the people whom you serve. Those are the people, you know what they're likely to give. You know this is how they think. And while you look like them, and some of you don't even look like them, but while you think you have them under control, you realize now that they're not under control. 
because some of them, they would turn that same gun on you if necessary, because after all, they see us all as one big melting pot. So I'm just saying to you, don't expect me to support people who are going to show up with nooses and Confederate flags and swastikas. You, have you looked at me and seen the color of my skin? They would turn that, that gun on me in a minute. If they can get me in a noose, they would. And so I'm saying to all of you who are out there supporting these people who are fringe on the fringe, who are fringe elements, and who have nothing better to do than to sit down and try to overturn the duly elected processes that have been put in place. It's not your constitution, it's mine. So if it is yours, it's mine as well. So if I have to uphold the law, then you should uphold the law. And if you are not found guilty, then I should not be found guilty. And there is going to come a time when this is going to be called into action. I don't know if it's after the pandemic, but something is going to be done about the people who showed up at the Capitol with nooses and Confederate flags and swastikas. I mean, it backfired in a way that nobody could have ever seen. And the reverberations just keep on going and going. It has alarmed everybody in the country. You think it's just Michigan. I think we're all alarmed that they would drive down it's almost like an eight-hour drive from up north to come down here, to come down to Lansing and to demonstrate. This just puts into perspective what people have always been saying. You know, people go to prison and you and I are always like, yeah, everybody in prison says they're innocent, right? Everybody says they didn't commit the crime. They may not, sometimes they may not be guilty of that crime, but they might be guilty of something else. But how are you going to seriously look at what people say they're guilty of when you have people who feel like I can march if I want to and show up at the Capitol with their guns and swastikas? I mean, can you, can you all, first of all, I want to ask every white American this question. How are you all going to support Hitler? How do you justify your support for Hitler? Hitler was not even really white. Hitler, you know, Hitler's mother was a Jew, right? Okay, so he was practicing self-hatred. Is that what it is? Right? But how do you justify supporting Hitler when 90 years ago, almost 80 years ago, this country sent people to war for what Hitler did in Europe? And we never wanted to see the rise of that kind of hate again. How do you justify supporting Hitler? The person whom you're protesting against is a white woman. She's not Jewish. She's a white woman who looks just like you. She's the governor of the state. So tell me again, how do you justify your support of people with the swastikas? And the Confederate flag is a symbol. It's not a symbol of your culture because then you are affirming that your culture practiced slavery, the enslavement of black people. That means you force people to work and beat them if they didn't work and kill them when they didn't work for free. That's what your Confederate flag stands for. So tell me again, how do you claim that as your culture? You're proud of that? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. So tell me again, what is the justification? And for all of you who organize these people, you must have known they were going to come down there with some foolishness. It got out of hand. For the love of God, the police did not open up fire. You realize if the police had opened up fire, what would have happened? But then again, the police don't open up fire on white people. But if they were black in the crowd with guns, they would have. If they were brown people, they would have. But the police don't open up fire on white people. What if somebody had made a mistake? So you know what's going to happen. It's not going to happen again. Because the organizers are not going to organize it. And it tells me that you, the organizer, are guilty. You're guilty of sponsoring an insurrection. You're guilty of sponsoring people who still believe in slavery, the enforcement of black people working for free. And you believe that slavery was justified because you had nooses. So if the black lieutenant governor of Michigan had entered into the Capitol, were they going to catch him and put a noose around his neck? That's what you sponsored. The Republican Party of Michigan, that's what you sponsored. That's what you paid people to come down to Lansing and do.
So now come to people of color and say you're not racist and say that you support everybody else. Show it to us because the evidence that we saw last week does not lie. And it, it brings into broader context how we took such a while in letting this man free. His name is Richard Phillips. He spent 46 years in jail for a crime he didn't commit. And do you know why? The reason he spent 46 years in jail is because at that time, the prosecutor was white. The sheriffs and the police hierarchy who investigated crimes were white. The judges were white. The appellate court judges were white. The, the prison guards and the prison warden and the people in charge of the prisons were white. It was racism. This is 1972. So this is Detroit, like maybe about four, three years after the 1967, this 1968 riots. So naturally, everybody was up in arms against black people. Black people were working in the factories and could not live where they could afford to live because of nothing else but racism. They couldn't have a say in government of the city, although they were working and had elected representatives who were just as capable. This is 1972. This is not even that long ago. This is in, you know, most of us who are alive, no, we were alive. I mean, we were kids or weren't born yet, born shortly after that. But this is not that long ago. We're not talking about 100 years ago. This is 1972 Michigan. So it, it's no stretch of the imagination then that we fast forward from 1972 Michigan, locking people up with on flimsy evidence or non-existent evidence, to white men feeling they have to take their power back with their guns and marching on Lansing. Maybe they'll do it again. But I tell you one thing that we're not going to stand for now. And it's people like Richard Phillips being sent to jail on flimsy evidence. This man got free because of the Innocence Project, the Innocence Clinic. You've heard of the Innocence Clinic? The Innocence Clinic at the University of Michigan is sponsored, right? So they take cases that have been sent up for appeal or people appeal to them and they review the evidence, the data, do the DNA and so on. When they looked at the case in this story, this man was already in jail when the crime was committed. Can you believe that? Nobody check that? He wasn't present. Some eyewitness who lied because they, they, the person who we committed the crime with told him that if he went to court and said something else, he would be locked up. And on that flimsy evidence, the jury and the prosecutor locked him up. And they say it was a jury of his peers. In those days, it was white people who were jurors. So I don't know how it's a jury of my peers and they don't look and sound like me. I've never understood that concept. You remember O.J. Simpson? They claimed that O.J. Simpson had a jury of his peers, but none of the, the jurors were football players, had been professional football players. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think O.J. did it. I am just saying the concept of a jury of your peers is predicated on what premise? That because he's black and I'm black, that's a jury of my peers. I'm an author and speaker. God forbid something were to happen. Would Who would be on my jury panel? Just because they're black or would it be people who are authors and speakers? That's my peerage. So oh, oh, when you look at it, you have to wonder a jury of whose peers in those days, they were all white. So how are they a jury of my peers? This man went to jail for something so flimsy. The evidence that was concocted was flimsy. It wasn't even circumstantial. Let me read what Judge Helen Brown found about the evidence. The evidence was not circumstantial. He was sent to life in prison at Jackson Prison in Washtenaw County. He lost appeals in 1976 and 90, all through the 80s. His appeal was finally heard in 19, in the 90, early 1990s by Judge Helen Brown. Get this. It was struck down. <laughs> it was struck down by the appeals, the appeals court judge, who are all white, two of whom have died, and one of whom, Maura Corrigan, is now in private practice in Detroit. I would love to meet Miss Maura Corrigan. 
I would love to ask her how many people who showed up in front of her with innocent cases that she she ruled against. Now, don't get me wrong. Mr. Phillips was not a model citizen, right? Mr. Phillips was not a model citizen. Mr. Phillips was someone who actually had served some time prior to. He had a troubled past. He came from a background that lent itself to, well, he was most likely to end up in prison than anywhere else. Let me give you some of his background. Uh, Richard Phillips, a Detroit native, was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of a mutual friend in 1972. The only evidence provided was the testimony of a man almost 50 years of a man who almost 50 years later reve revealed Phillips actually had no part in the murder and was thus innocent. I kid you not. But until the Michigan Innocence Clinic at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor represented him in court before a Wayne, court, Wayne County Circuit Court judge in 2017, Phillips sat in prison for nearly 46 years. Appeal after appeal failed, and with each passing year, any glimmer of hope for his freedom was dimmed. Although his freedom today, uh, legal observers say that Richard Phillips served the longest known wrongful prison sentence in American history. I must say they did pay him a million dollars, $1.7 million for his time. But look at what he lost, though. He lost his family because he was married at the time with children. He lost his family. His daughter moved to France and she never came back. And he's now rekindling a relationship with his son. Only God knows. Now, when I read the full story, I could see why the children didn't believe him either because their father had, had started to do a life of crime. I'm just putting it into full perspective. But the crime for which he was charged and sent to life in prison, he was guilty of. And because he's black, nobody cared as usual. They're just going to lock you up, even if you're not guilty. But the circumstance, the evidence, this is what I'm saying. The justice system is colorblind. Don't let them fool you. The justice system is colorblind. You can watch all the Law & Order episodes you want. You can watch all the Chicago PD and make it look like white people always come in as the savior. The justice system is colorblind. Once you get in the system, if you are not wealthy, and if you don't have power and influence, the, the system is blind. It's colorblind. Whether it's blind with green because of money can get you out or it is simply just blind, period. You're black and brown. You're going to do time. The entire criminal justice system, the entire prison system is predicated on the backs of black and brown people going to jail so that other people can have jobs and have a life. I don't know about you, but stuff like that bothers me. Stuff like that makes me sit up at nights and think because, but for the grace of God, go out. It could be me. It could be you who find ourselves one day in a situation where you're probably innocent, but you know how it looks like. It looks like you're guilty, but you're black and brown. They're not going to give you the benefits of the doubt. They're going to lock you up nonetheless and rob you of your life. You really think $1.7 million is going to buy back your health? Or is it going to buy back your time? Or is it going to give you back what you lost? You really think so? No. They're giving me 1.7 million. I'm looking at them like, who are you talking to? You better go do something better. Right? You're going to give me back everything that you stole from me. They didn't take the time to investigate. It seems like once he got into, into the system... They, they listened to the other guy's testimony, who was a white man. They listened to his testimony and decided that that was it. At the time, the prosecutor was white. Was white. The prosecutor was white. The, 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 the investigators were white. The police were white. Everybody was white. How do you think it was going to go in his favor? Impossible. Here comes Judge Helen Brown trying to overturn it, and the Court of Appeals reversed it. When CNN reached out to the only living uh, jurist who was at the time on the court, the appellate court in Michigan, her name is Maura Corrigan. Y'all need to go look her up. She denied, she did not want to make a comment because they presented the case like, how 
did you not see that this man was, there was no evidence. And they reviewed it and overturned Judge Helen Brown's conviction. Because Judge Helen Brown said, frankly, this man is innocent. He wasn't even there. And the testimony that further came out afterwards, that's from Mitchell, from Frank Mitchell, that said that Richard Phillips was not even there. Does this sound like a true crime? Doesn't it? It makes you wonder, though, who does this stuff? Are, are they just randomly just locking up people because the prison industrial complex is real? It, listen, when you and I hear stuff like the prison industrial complex, we hasten to think that this is something that is made up by liberals, that this is something that is created by liberals. It's not. It's real. Black people go to jail. Black and brown people go to jail all the time who are innocent. Whether they have a past, whether they have a record or not, or a criminal record. I guarantee you the FBI has a file on everybody. I guarantee it. You want to know how I know? <laughs> because they have a file on me. They have a file on my mother. They have a file on my grandmother. The FBI has a file on everybody. That's how they keep tabs on everybody. They're probably going to find something if they look. I mean, hey, I did tweet some stuff, right? If that is considered a crime. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you look at these things, it is very difficult for you and I perhaps to say that uh, when you look at it, I, I can't stand by and just say, well, you know, because of his past, it kind of created a, 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 co a complex within the minds of the, the, the jury that this man, it's quite credible that he committed the crime simply because of his past. But I want to ask the question, though, where was the evidence for that case? Yes, he had already been tried and found guilty of the other stuff that he did. But this case where he's accused of conspiracy to murder because he, according to the testimony of someone who was unsubstantiated, Jesus, you know what that tells me? Anybody can make up any story about me, about you, and you can be locked up for life. Somebody can't just get up and say, I saw Harriet Kamak and she was down at that store robbing the store. And then they go to court and they say that. And then I get locked up for something that I didn't even do. Somebody can say that I killed someone when I wasn't even there. So they can go and say, oh, Harriet Kimmick, uh killed him. She was right there and she was present. How do you know I saw her? Sincerely and really? That person probably would not. I, anyway, let me stop. I, 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 I That's when you're really going to see something. Because that's when I would really get involved. Because just think about it. If that is the case, somebody just stood in court and said Richard Phillips was present at the murder. And they took that and ran with it and sent him away for life. Destroyed his life. And notice when he got out of jail, you know, they didn't make a big deal. Where's the prosecutor? Up till now, I can't find the name of the prosecutor. I want to know which white prosecutor in 1972 to did this because I guarantee you, if you go back through the years when that person was the prosecutor in Wayne County, Michigan, that person locked up black and brown people who were innocent. Give us the darn name. I'm going to do some research and I'm going to come back to you and tell you what I found out because this is just nuts. We can't have a justice system based on the color and your color is your, your strength. And your color is your truth. That's not truth to power. Your color cannot give you power over someone else. We can't have a justice system based on that. We got to change that. That has to change. Because if somebody white doesn't like me, let's say some white woman, I, I walk into a store and I'm standing there admiring lipstick or so on. And maybe I'm going to buy it, maybe I don't. But some white woman who decides that she wants to give me a bad day and this, she calls security because she says that I stole some uh, thingy, some lipstick or some foolishness. 
And because she's white, you're going to believe her more than go look at the cameras, more than believe the evidence to see where I actually stole something and slipped it in my purse. Hello. This is why I love cameras today because it just disproves a lot of stuff. Sometimes I can't even remember the color of my favorite lip gloss. So I will take a picture of it before I go to the store, right? And when I go to where I buy it, right, I will pull up the picture just so I can see what's the name of the color and then look at the color so I can get it, right? But what if I didn't live in the day and age of cameras and I'm going to pull out a lipstick similar to the one that I want to buy and some white woman comes up and because her color is her power and she can accuse men. This is why I say all the time. This is why I wasn't born. I wasn't born in the U.S. I, I couldn't. I couldn't live through what uh, Jim Crow and all that. They would have killed me, y'all. I, 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 they would have killed me early. It just wouldn't work. It, it couldn't have worked because the injustice that I have seen and read off in history books. I cannot imagine how anyone lived through that. What a traumatic time! How do you people live with yourselves? And then fast forward, it's 40 years later, almost 50 years later, and you're still marching with swastikas and Confederate flags. And then you shut your mouth and say, I'm not racist. See, that's my black friend. I, I hang up with Jim down the corner on a, on a Thursday night and we sip two beers. But you just march down to Lansing with your swastikas and your Confederate flags and horror of horrors. Your nooses. Swastika, Hitler, who hated people. The Jews are people of color. They're just whiter than the rest of us. Hitler, that's what the swastika represents. The Confederate flag is a symbol of slavery and the enslavement of black people. Nooses are Jim Crow. And you march on Lansing with that? I don't know if the Republican Party is going to win a seat in Michigan after this. Only in those neighborhoods where people like that live. Don't look for any winning votes. Nowhere south of Lansing. It ain't going to happen. Because nobody is going to forget that. That a governor of the state elected by all the people in the state called an emergency a state of emergency because people were dying. And guess what? The evidence now proves that she was right because the rate of deaths has slowed down. More people are getting tested, so we're finding more infections still exist. So we still got to stay away from face-to-face -face contact. So it proves her right. And you want to tell me that because you don't like the fact... Some people have even said, well, since it's happening only in Detroit, she should open up the rest of the state. Are you stupid or are you stupid? This is a virus that affects everybody. Detroit is just more densely populated. Think about that, people. It's spreading in Lansing. Do you know I was in Lansing last week? And while I was there, an alert showed up on my phone that since the protest marched the previous week in Lansing, the previous two weeks, the rates of infection in the city of Lansing have spiked. It's airborne. What is also airborne is hate. It's very easy to be in a crowd with a herd mentality and the hate just spreads. You One person espouses hate rhetoric and all of a sudden everybody in the crowd just starts acting it out. You want to believe me that this isn't? I just sent a tweet on Twitter in which I talked about swastikas and Confederate flags and then Twitter blocked me from tweeting. Because I talked about how crazy it is that in a state that claims that they want justice because they have every right to march is the same state, the same state that locked up an innocent man for 46 years. I am now beginning to wonder how many innocent people are locked up. I'm not talking about criminals who have a lifetime and a history of criminality who claim that they're innocent. I'm talking about where the evidence proves that they're innocent and it's overlooked. In Mr. Phillips's case, the prosecutors didn't interview anybody else but that one witness. 
they persuaded the jury made up of white men and women that Mr. Phillips was guilty of a murder that he did not commit. He didn't do anything. He didn't do it. It wasn't him. <laughs> but who was listening? White people? What white people? Where are they? I'm telling you, we've got a problem. This is Michigan justice. Michigan justice says that if you're black and brown, I'm going to lock you up even when you're innocent. But it's okay for white men with guns and swastikas and nooses to show up in Lansing. I was in Lansing the day before they marched last week. What if I were there? What if I had been, I've been to the Capitol? I've stood on the steps of the Capitol. What if I had been there? They would have pointed a noose at me. There were elected representatives of the people of Michigan wearing bulletproof vests, doing legal work. And nobody's talking about that. You know why? Because you're all embarrassed. No, you're not embarrassed. You're not really embarrassed. You just got caught with your pants down and you don't like the spotlight shining on your racist cells. You're not embarrassed at all. And you're not apologetic either. Because not one white representative has stepped forward to apologize to black people in Michigan that, look, this was this went a little too far. This is not how this was supposed to go. No, you ain't going to say that. Because those same white men with guns will turn on you. And they've probably done work for you in the past. Who knows what kind of history they all have with you. I am pretty sure the organizers of this, whatever they intended to accomplish... The one thing they have accomplished is shown us that people are racist, that they have accomplished very well, and that people who are racist exist in Michigan, and they're there to be mobilized and can be mobilized. That's what they've proven to us. I don't care if egg is on their faces. That's neither here nor there. You pulled them out. You brought them out. I know you probably were saying, oh, my God, they did not. This was not what this was about. Tough luck. That's your electorate. We've been trying to keep that down for years. So this kind of thing never rises up. Can I just ask you a question? If it becomes your turn in the next gubernatorial election, what, we have another two years in that cycle, 2022, right? If it becomes your turn to become the governor of Michigan, highly unlikely after this, but if, let's just say, it becomes your turn, and you have a governor, and your governor decides to call for an emergency order, and your people don't like it. Are y'all gonna go? Ma you better go down there and march just the same, because you're defending your constitutional right. What is your constitutional right to enslave black people, to pick up a noose and put it around a black person's neck? That's what I want to know. I I watched the crowds, and I watched this young man with what they call a mullet. Did you all see him? And he pushed the police so he could get to the front of the line. The police were trying to prevent him from getting in the Capitol. He pushed the police officer. Can I just tell you, if that were a black or brown person like myself, they would have been shot. The police would not have hesitated to pull his gun out and, sh and shot me. He would have beat me, especially if a woman. He would have beat me and kicked me on the ground, stomped on my face, then locked me up. That such is racism. It, it is very uh, interesting to me, the dynamics that go into people thinking they're better than others. I, I often ask the question, show me where you live. Show me your house and your bank account when you think you're better. <laughs> I, I've, I, I wanna know, show me your heritage. Show me your ancestors, where they come from. But you wanna say that you're better than other people. You're just one paycheck away from disaster. How is it that you're better than others? All of us, those who are appointed, they can vote you out. If they don't vote you out, they can bring lawsuits against you that can cripple you for years and decades. So tell me again. Until you own the stock market, don't even start talking. I've never understood the premise of racism where the color of a person's skin denote that you are black, denote that you are better. I've never understood that concept. 
This week, we're going to do another show on Louisiana prisons, how women are dying in prison. By the way, th just so you know, put this whole COVID-19 thing in perspective. Uh, one of the defendants in the case, uh, Palumbo, the white guy in this case, Palumbo, he could be Italian, he could be ethnic, I don't know. He died after confessing. He finally confessed that they held him and made him confess to something he didn't do, right? And made him implicate Richard Phillips, right? Do you know that that man died in April of COVID-19 in jail? So prisons are now, they're not a petri dish. Prisons now are a hotbed of coronaviruses because of the nature of prisons, you know, confined small spaces, lack of sanitary conditions. They're now saying, well, we give them a, a, a hand sanitizer a little too late, This it, it was the nature of prisons is that it was going to happen, right? But just think of it. Uh, it, it makes me think how all uh, people like me, people of color, maybe it doesn't happen for you because you're white. So you get the benefit of the doubt in the justice system more than I would. I have seen, my daughter used to work at uh, Victoria's Secret when she was in college, right? And she would tell us, that white girls would come in the store, would rob the store. They would go and take underwear and bras out of the drawers and walk out. And if they're caught, the managers would slap them on the wrist and tell them, don't come back again. But when black girls did it, they were called, Novi police were called, and they were locked up. That is justice. That is what you call the color of justice. And that is generations later. This is in the in the in the two thousands. So this is not like oh that was forty years ago. No, still happens. You're going to a store, and I you white girls, white people are stealing stuff. Nobody ever you ever seen the police come up. When was the last time you saw that? It's just okay. They don't lock up white people, but <laughs> black people do that. And they get an immediate record. And kids do stuff all the time. Do you see what I'm saying? The color of justice. What passes for justice here in the state of Michigan is what passes for justice in the United States. South or North, it doesn't matter. It seems to me that white people are the same everywhere they are. I don't understand it because I don't understand how you sit back and let stuff like this. And I know it rankles you and you get riled up and you're waiting to say, but Harriet, it, but you guys continue to do it. You never call out the people who stand by and send people innocently to prison. You never call it out. So how do I know that you are different? How will any of us know that? Because white people like to say I'm not racist. Some of them, they like to say I'm not racist. Well, show it to me. Show it to me by not talking about a black person. Show it to me by calling out people who continually put people in jail for something that they didn't do. Show it to me. Don't just, how am I supposed to know? I know you by your actions. Now, the people at the Innocence Clinic at the University of Michigan, clearly they're on the side of justice because this is not the first person they have set free. This is not the first case that they have reviewed and determined that the evidence does not support the conviction. So them, I can say, they're not racist because they're working on the side of justice. But what about the rest of you all who like to say, no, I'm not racist. I have a black friend, my God in heaven. So she's your friend or she's your friend because she's black and it looks good on your profile to say you have a black friend. I'm just saying. Some of you hire black people because you have to. My daughter found one case of people uh, who violate federal law by not hiring black people. And they happen to, they, they can do it and get away with it because it's not enforceable. Who's going to enforce it? Other white judges and, and, and so on? No. They're kind of like it's their business. They do what they do until somebody stands up and speak out. So how do I know that you are not racist if your actions don't say anything? The uproar that that this march on Lansing created last week was unprecedented. People from all over the country were like, oh my God, what is happening in Michigan? 
Michigan is normally like quiet. Nothing happens here. We go boating, maybe go right on on Bell Isle. The greatest adventure here is a state trooper chasing somebody. <laughs> I kid you not, that, that passes for fun here, right? In Detroit, they have shootings like every night. So it's like, what happens here? All of a sudden, we're in the national spotlight and the global spotlight because people want to reenact 1956 Alabama. That's what you all look like. You look like 1946 Alabama, 1936 Arkansas, 1926 Louisiana, 1916 Mississippi, 1925 Texas. 1950, Florida. That's what you look like when you picked up your guns, your swastikas, Confederate flags, and marched on a Lansing. With your nooses, that just in case you catch a Negro, that's what you were saying, just in case you catch the Negro who is the Lieutenant Governor. Just in case you catch the Negro who is an elected representative of the people, you would lock them up. Seriously? And you now expect me to believe that every conviction that has been made on a person of color in the last 50 years is true. Richard Phillips's case took that all out. My God in heaven, seriously, he wasn't present. You took the test. How many times has this happened? And check this out. When it was first appealed, do you know the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office denied it? They, they, I mean, when the conviction came, when the story came against them, they said no. And the Court of Appeals in Michigan sided with the Wayne County Prosecutors, which they invariably do, but they didn't even read the transcripts of the, ev of the evidence. They didn't even read it until the Innocence Clinic brought the case and the current Wayne County prosecutor, she had to say, whoa, it's troubling. Do you know that? Maybe that's why the, the prosecutor now is black. I mean, it's kind of like you had to set the racial balance in. You, you, you kind of have to look at it from the perspective, listen, not every white person is racist, but you who are not, you got to look at it like some things went so wrong for so long that we have to do something to set it right and make people feel like this is not going to continue. We can't let it happen or let it continue. It just can't. You got to set it in place. And here's how you do that. There need to be more prosecutors who look like the population. The population is not pure white anymore. There need to be more prosecutors and more judges, more appellate judges, more judges in the Supreme Court. They need to look like the population. We need to have police officers who look like the population. We need governors and elected representatives who look like the population. It's got to change. What is the composite? of the population, wait for the census results. It's going to be mind boggling and mind blowing because suddenly the country is going to be less than majority white. And if that's what you're all afraid of, you're going about it the wrong way. It would have seemed to me that the best thing you could do is strength, send out the, you know, a white flag, maybe not surrender. Okay. Send out the olive flag, man. I want to talk peace. Let's negotiate. Because now the power balance is going to shift. What are you going to do? I'm so glad this is the governor of Michigan right now. This is her right now taking steps. Just this morning, she told Fox 2 that what she saw last week in Lansing is, as, is the most racist thing she has seen in the United States. And she's in her 40s. She's in her 40s. Can you believe that? That's what the governor of Michigan has said. And I believe, I believe 
that this may not happen again because everybody is suddenly afraid. Oh my God, they probably have my face on camera. They're probably going to call me out. I think that's what people need to do. Go focus on some of those people, find out where they work. If they work anywhere for any organization, they need to be called out and they need to be fired for you. You're racist. What are you doing there? You can't tell me you're defending the public good. Bob Marley said this, until the philosophy that holds one race superior and another inferior, inferior has to be finally and permanently discredited and abandoned. That's what Bob Marley said. The, 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 the racial dynamics of one race being superior and another being inferior has lent itself to wars and where they haven't been wars, there have been civil wars. And where they haven't been civil wars, there have been injustices, like in Richard Phillips's case. That's what sent Richard Phillips to jail. It was racism. The belief that one race is superior and another is inferior. The belief that the testimony is enough, no investigation required, nothing required. Because one race, if I, the prosecutor, and I'm white, determine that this black man who is inferior to me in the first place because he's black, then my philosophy that one, my race is superior and your race is inferior is what sent Richard Phillips to jail. It makes me wonder, with that kind of ideology in place, how many people are really seriously sitting in jail who really are innocent? I've never looked at it from that perspective before. Like everybody else, I've always assumed that you went to jail because you did something wrong. But now it's making me question that because the philosophy of racism forced a march on the Capitol in Lansing, threatening my security and my safety as a person of color, threatened my safety and my children's safety that they could actually do this with nooses. It's the same philosophy that made this man go to jail for something he did not do. I want us all to think about that. It doesn't matter what color you are on the spectrum. It never occurred to you, maybe, that your color is on a spectrum of human colors. If you were to line up all the people in the world, you would realize that we have a spectrum of color. It never occurred to you that that's all that it was. Maybe that's why God has allowed things to happen, because now, since you all have messed that up, Everybody's just going to look like one color in a bit. We're all going to be shades of brown in a minute. Give it about 20 years. And that is as it should be. Because we developed a philosophy that created 400 years of bondage. That has created condemned people to lifestyles of crime and air pollution and endemic poverty, systemic institutionalized poverty and injustice, where people are robbed of their freedom. My name is Harriet Kimmick. This has been Down to Earth. Thank you so much for joining me. For more information on who I am and what I do, please go to my website, harrietkimmick.com, as well as visit my pages on Anchor FM. Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, as well as iHeartRadio. Thank you so much for being a part of our experience. Share this message with others. To Mr. Phillips, I say welcome back to the society. I wish you well. To his family and his children, I wish you well. Stay tuned, everybody. Thanks so much. Be blessed.